Hello and welcome to chapter number 13 of the video tutorial how to set up an online shop with PHP and Dreamweaver. Well, in the previous chapter we we stopped while designing a little the, the layout. So we had done made we had made several layers, one containing the header, another one containing these two menus on the left and on the right, and one further layer for the footer. Let's make this a little cuter, so to say, a little more attractive. And the first thing we're going to do is inserting some some includes here. We will see this to insert all the catalog stuff and so on. The first thing we're going to do is creating a graphic for the header. What I used to make them with Photoshop, but you can make it as you please. For example, I'm gonna make sure that the width is is five pixels. Now you will see what I do, and the height will be 180. So, so there we are. Now I'm gonna take a couple of colors. For example, this blue looks nice, and the secondary one will be similar but slightly softer and with a gradient we just let's see let's see let's see I just do this gradient and that's it I save this as a PNG file and I will save it in my shop folder which is shoes in the subfolder images and I will name it header background Okay, so there we have it. Next thing we will do, uh, I will be taking this one and turning it into a gray color, and this one into a darker gray. Well, this isn't a Photoshop tutorial, so it's one. There are hundreds of Photoshop tutorials. In no way I'm an expert in Photoshop, so I just do what I can. Um, I'm going to try and scale this a little, so so that it becomes smaller this would be an image for the footer I will cut it down by this part and that's it right 100% I'm gonna save it as footer, back, footer background PNG for example and there it is okay I've got an image for the header and another one for the footer now we're going to our application Let's see if I can find it. Shoe shop. Here it is. I didn't see it. Right, we already have the images inside, header background and footer background. We can even click on them and have a preview of them. Let's analyze a little how was our basic template. We we open main. If you remember there we had the, the header which by now appears much to the left and I want it to be centered. I'm going to do something. The header, for example, um, I'm going to open the associated CSS. Remember, it was main CSS. As you can see, this is impossible to follow if you didn't watch the previous chapter, but if you have watched it recently, it's pretty easy. Right, I'm going to look for the header, for example, and I'm going to include the background image. I open it here, header, I choose background, background image, browse and I will tell it that the image is header background PNG this image is 180 pixels height I accept and now I will give a height value of 180 pixels there we are and I accept now we have all this code now we save and let's see if by now we are improving and there it is as you can see the header goes from one side to the other so it takes always 100% of the screen width. Now we take this and we're going to center it by doing a new a new div, a new header. Because this header is, is the blue stuff and I need a floating block in the middle. So I will do something. I will copy this, paste it and change this header to interior header, for example. We leave this header and copy this div stuff to, to to paste it now and that's it now I have a new header that isn't defined in the CSS by now but there we go it's called interior header we come to the header I always copy and paste it it's the easiest way not to make a mistake this is the interior header 
I copy and paste it here. The size initially won't be 100%, but equal to the subcontainer. That's 180 pixels to fit the one below. We will remove the background color and the background image. The height is 180 pixels, and then to center it, let's see. I will take the margin and leave it zero and auto, which is the way to center the image. I'm going to save. I will also save the template. It will ask me if I want to save the index file as well, and I say yes. Update, and as you can see, this is already centered here. So I have created a header that goes from one side to the other easily done with div layers and then I will include here my logo here we will include a menu now it's very easy so for example what we're going to do now is it would be interesting including here I have the logo around here which is a charco shoes so we will open this logo let's hope we can use it here it is. We will delete this administration text, so let's cut out this part. Here we have the cutout logo. And now, um, as the background is blue, maybe, maybe these blue letters won't work properly. So let's do it very quickly. Um, a new one with 300, height 100. And I'm going to make a logo on the run. Uh, we we type here El Charco Shoes. And, uh, and I'm going to apply the, the typical shadow effect. Now I will change the color to a yellow to stand out of the blue background. El charco shoes, there it is. And I'm going to add a typical effect. Let's open a new layer. Let's see. I select this and and I try to join it to this layer. In the new layer I fill it with a darker color. Okay, I think more or less, more or less it will do. I will do it a little more, fit to size. And there it is. I deactivate the background layer and here we have the logo. I'm going to save it as JPG file, save as, oops, sorry, PNG file. Save as trans logo PNG. Save and back to the web page again and here I will insert the image straight away insert image logo trans this alternative text thing is important for the positioning later so I will enter shoe shop and there we have the logo let's see the results I save, say yes, update as always and there we have the logo if we feel that this is too high because I want to add a menu here and I don't want it to be so big, there is no problem. We're moving within header. So we go to the classes in the CSS file. We change the height from 180 pixels to 100 pixels. And also here in the interior header. I save, update, and now it's a little smaller. Next thing will be attacking the database to create a catalog here. Okay, um, that means the list of shoes we are, we've got. If you remember, in the administration we had a, um, a folder for the catalog, and the logical thing for a page like this would be showing the catalog here. It's very easy. Let's do it. We're going to create a new page, not a template page, but a real page, and we're going to create it in a folder. I like to call includes because it's the one where I pull all the things and files that go back and forth. Now will you understand it? Inside includes I create a new file and I will name header. No, sorry, I will name it catalog. I have read 
header and I got confused. So I will name it catalog. What will we do in this file? In it we will extract the list of the catalog we've got. I mean the directory we've got. How can we do this? It's pretty easy. We come here, click on new record set. <coughs> the connection is the usual one. And what table do I want to use? It's going to be category table. I'm mixing category and catalog, but anyway, we know what we're talking about. Now I'm going to select all. Order by description. It already makes the query automatically. This hasn't got more complications. I save it. I have the query there. And I'm going to put it in screen. You can see it here. The, the description. There it is. And in addition, I want this description to repeat because if I do only this, it will only give me the first data. And I, what I really want is a repetition. For it to repeat, in behaviors, I click the plus sign and ask it to repeat region. Then I ask it to repeat region. It asks me what query to use. Record cell 1 in this case. And I will ask it to show me all the registers because anyway, it won't be more than 10, 15 categories. I click accept and you can see up there it says repeat okay next thing I uh, don't know if uh, okay let's do one thing bear in mind that this page I have just made that is extracting the data from the catalog that means the categories uh, is a page I will insert in other pages so I will delete all that redundant information I would be already having in other pages it's a little weird to understand but you will I mean, all this code here is to be deleted. This body and HTML also deleted, and now I only have PHP code. No HTML at all, no blockings at all. Okay, as you can see, this page is still working, although it hasn't got the HTML code, so I save it. And the next thing we're going to do is, in the template, in this part, here I'm going to delete all the things I have written. I'm going to delete this P as well, and now I'm going to make an inclusion. I'm going to include the file of the catalogs of the pages. Why am I doing all this? Because if tomorrow I change the way of showing the catalog, I would just need to modify this file, right? I would change this file, and as it's included in a template, it would change in the whole web page. There you have the magic of easily changing many things in the web. One cannot do this query in all the pages because it's a huge work to do. So let's make an include. We come to this label here and there is a small button that says include. Okay, the include is in the following folder. Includes and it's called catalog PHP. Now I will save it like that. It will tell me the usual stuff about updating the rest. Okay, there we have it. And now let's see what's happening by now. Here, boom, we have a lot of mistakes. Never mind, this is normal and I wanted you to see it. What happens? It's warning us that we're sending it to a folder which is in a previous folder. It's impossible because the root of my page is already shoes. So, where should I pay attention? I just go to the catalog and in this require I'm going to imagine that this folder <coughs> as I'm calling to it from a file that is in the root of the web I'm calling this folder also from the root of the web so I have to delete the two dots on the stroke I suppose some of you are kind of astonished but most of you have understood it it's just a matter of fighting doing a couple of includes and you will understand it by now I save this I update here and you see it already shows the list of categories I had it doesn't look nice. Let's improve it a little. We could, for example, introduce here a BR to break this line. And I save. Update. You see? Now the catalog appears correctly. The category appears directly. This appears because of the database. If you go to administration and add one more category, it will automatically appear here. And well, I think that with this to continue and not to make it too long and for you to understand everything we've done, we will do this line, this include stuff very often, so it's important for you to understand it. And I understand for those of you who have never used it, it may sound strange, but I honestly think it's the most adequate way of, of doing this type of web pages and, and any type in general. 
So let's leave it there, there and see you in chapter 14 where we will go in depth with this include topic and we will make an include for each thing, one for the header, for the footer, one for the content, etc. So I hope everything is going fine and that you are making progress with your online shop. Regards.